Hi, my name is Raven Snook, and I'm the editor of creative content at TDF. And I'm really thrilled today to be talking to the two original architects of the original TKTS booth in that launched in 1973, John Schiff and Bob Mayers. Uh, they are here to talk about their memories of how that came about, how they came up with the logo and the name, because they did both, and the unique construction, and whether they thought it would still exist in any form 50 years later. So welcome. Thank you so much for talking to me today to celebrate our 50th anniversary. Happy anniversary. Yeah. Well, happy it's to not, be here. Yes. It's not, it's not my 50th, thankfully, but uh, that, that actually happened a few years ago, to be totally honest. Uh, so, you know, the first question I have is really how it came about, how this project fell into your lap, because I don't think you were actually part of the theater community at that time. Am I correct? No, we were not. Really. Well, so do you remember how that happened? Who contacted well, you? You know, um, at the time, the Times Square was very... Um, depressed. The whole city was depressed. And um, there was a lot of crime. A few people were walking around. The billboards in Times Square were mostly empty. And uh, there was a lady named Doris Friedman, who was then the first commissioner of public affairs. And she was the president of the Municipal, uh, Municipal Art Society. She was actually hiring artists to paint the billboards in Times Square because hmm. There was very little pedestrian traffic, and nobody was, the advertisers didn't want to use them. And um, at the time, Anna Krauss, who you heard of, was yes. she was the president of the Municipal Arts Society, uh, was pushing the theater owners because the theaters were empty. People weren't going down there at night, and they were they were mostly empty. She was trying to convince them to build some facility in Duffy Square where people could go and buy half price tickets on the same day of performance. So we would, we would, we knew Doris, we were dealing with, the, with Doris and the city at the time, and she recommended us. And so um, we were hired by the theater development front to come up with uh, a, some kind of a design for a tickets booth in Duffy Square. And the city's department of parks department donated a trailer, a beat up old small trailer and said, basically come up with something and you park this in the middle of Duffy Square and this will be the tickets booth. John, you can take it from there. Well, the, there also was a precedent for this. Apparently there was a person who was selling half price tickets in a drugstore, Gray's drugstore. Yeah, drug Gray's drugstore, drug yes. So but that had, had ended a, in, I think, maybe the 40s or the 50s. So there'd been many decades yes, of not was, having half price tickets. Right. Yes. At any rate, so that was, uh, you know, apparently very successful. At any rate, so the challenge for us was that we had this trailer, but we really didn't have a budget other than to be able to say paint it or cut some windows in the side so that ticket seller could be on one side, the person on the other side. I heard you and had $5,000 actually. Exactly. Which in so 1973 we, money was still not a lot of money. You know not. what that's worth today? I looked it up. By the oh, way. how much? $5,000 in uh, the, that at that time is now worth $36,287.44. So, I mean, the same problem, obviously, what can you do today with 36,000? What could you do then with 5,000? And so we realized after conversa um, conversations with the theater development fund that they didn't have a capital budget to pay for a, a new structure, but they had an operating budget. And so we discussed it internally, Bob and myself and others, and we concluded maybe we could rent something instead of you know serious new construction. And clearly one option was scaffolding, which is used on the fixed buildings on the side, but it's not permanent things and it's something that's rented. So at that point, we realized we could rent the scaffolding and create this larger structure in a way that would screen and hide this trailer, um, but have a presence. You know, you're competing with a lot of action in Times Square. And that was the genesis. That was the starting point of uh, 
what is a problem solving. And once we had that scaffold and we studied it in model form and everything, and then the next step was clearly the, the how, how do we make it uh, visible? And so we, in this model, the study, we developed a piece of basically paper, which would ultimately become canvas that was strung throughout the scaffolding structure. And so one thing led to the other, and then we had the issue of the, the logo, which is actually a funny story because in those days, there was a product called, I think, Letraset or something. It was basically letters with a sticky back that you could peel off and put on something. And we had, based on other projects, a bunch of these uh, Letraset letters in a drawer. And mm -hmm. so we took them out, but we didn't have the whole alphabet. But we ah. did, fortunately, have a T, a K, a T, and an S. We actually had two T's when you think about it. Anyway, so we just tested this to see what, you know, the scale, was it readable? What did it look like? And lo and behold, when we stepped back and looked at it, we said, ooh, this looks good. And the, the rest is history. And that, so, that is so funny. So I was going to ask you, you know, did you pitch different titles? Because you came up with the name TKTS. Did you pitch different ones? Were there any rejects? Or did you immediately say, oh, we don't have enough for tickets. Let's do this abbreviation. We could. We were thinking of calling it ZZZ. We had a lot of Zs. <laughs> But, you know, that wouldn't have gone over there. That would not. No, the, the theater shouldn't put you to sleep. If it does, it's not doing its job. some seats tonight. <laughs> no, we, we didn't have a focus group. It was just we looked at it. And we, we felt very confident that this thing was going to work. And then, of course, it gets repeated. And uh, then there was an issue. How do you light it? Because it's obviously functioning and active mostly uh, in, in, the, in the after hours. And uh, last, Bob, why don't you tell about the test well, weights? And, uh, we, we put sort of theatrical lights uh, behind the, the um, canvas. It wasn't canvas. It was a form of plastic. But it was translucent, so it let the light through. So these tickets could be both front and back lighted. Um, and, but then we, when we made this model, we realized that We've just got some of these amazing cheese things that I can't stop eating. <laughs> it's okay. You can snack and talk. Oh, I, I, I believe in not, you. It's not polite. I mean, it's, it's totally I, fine. <laughs> be nice if you shared them, Bob. Well, you won't. I'll send it over. I'll send it over with. Uh, with I, I don't think anybody's even doing messengering in this in this uh, apocalypse right now. So. I'm using Instacart <laughs> to get things in the other room to be brought to me here. Um, <laughs> So anyway, the, the, um, we realized this, this was a giant kite. It's just this structure made out of pipes and of sails, really. And in a heavy wind, it would blow around Times Square. It might bump into buildings and land upside down somewhere. So we decided it had to be held down. We couldn't do a foundation for it because it's over the subway. We don't know what that weight that would hold. And with $5,000, you, you couldn't buy any kind of foundation. So we were looking for something that could be rented because, it, as John said, it had a, a, an operating budget where you can rent things from that. And we found uh, pile driving test weights. When they build a building, they drive piles into the ground. But before they put the structure on top of them, they put test weights on top of them to see how many pounds they will hold. There are certain mm -hmm. codes. So you can rent those for a few dollars a month. So we rented these pile driving test weights and they would hold this down if we connected cables to the structure. So that was uh, another way of finding a way around this, working with this ridiculous budget. Um, then the when it was opened, you know, this was going to be up for a year or two. They didn't know how many people it would attract, how many tickets they would sell. Um, and so it was a test, really. We had no idea that it would be up for how many, I don't know how many years it was Did up. you guys make like bets with each other how long you thought it would be? No, I, I, every time there was a hurricane forecast, I turned off my television, closed the windows, <laughs> put on the shutters because I wasn't afraid of the hurricane. I was afraid somebody would call and say, by the way, that ticket booth is now on 38th Street. You know? <laughs> so 
Oh, we, we, uh, no, we, 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 it was, it was, it was anyway, the thing, um, we, we did several new other projects for the TKTS since then. Uh, we built three or four other ones. Uh, one at um, William Street, one was in the main lobby of the World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. We know what happened to that. Uh, one was in downtown Brooklyn. They were all different designs, but all with the same logo, the same uh, way it was treated with lighting uh, uh, and the, the, the bold uh, letters. Um, the interesting thing looking back is that we got a lot of other uh, that really got us into showbiz. I mean, if you want to, that's a wonderful dance. Uh, it got us into showbiz in that we then did um, Theater Row, uh, Phase 2 on 42nd Street. Oh, wow. theaters. We did the, the Miller Theater at Columbia University. We were hired by the city to write zoning regulations that would require signage on the buildings in Times Square and Duffy Square that were required signs of a certain presence, certain size, which was adopted by the city. Um, and then we also ended up doing the building just to the north of Duffy Square, right next to the tickets booth, the uh, Renaissance Hotel, which oh, is also, wow. that's also covered with signs. Yeah. And, and just to go back for one second, because you're saying you use these pre-made uh, letters. So the font was sort of picked for you. It, was the color also, or was that something you picked? I don't know if they were translucent and you could color them. I'm just curious how you got to the TKTS red that we well, know so well. All, all the letters we had were this Helvetica typeface. Mm -hmm. we, that was popular with us. Yeah, the and it was, and the, and the letters were black. At one point, they did change the letters when they redid some of the, the, uh, ribbon of canvas or as Bob said, some kind of plastic, they changed the color to red. I don't know if they went back to black at some point. It was back and forth a couple of times. Yeah. Oh, was it? I, I didn't even realize that. Yeah. I'm so used to the red. It's hard for me to see it. I even wear it on my lips. Like, it's hard for me to imagine it any other way. <laughs> well, the, you know, it's interesting. The, the logo has changed a little bit over time. Um, like I, I have this this Visual aids. Yeah. All right. So there, there and this one has, you see the T there, the, the, the uh, second T has only one crossbar over it. Um, the TKTS that the TDF uses has the two crossbars. We yeah. also, so things got separated, put back a couple of times. When they repainted it, it had a period after the TKTS. Hmm. Oh, it's it's been slightly altered, but not significantly enough that anybody would recognize it, except probably us. Um, it won a lot of awards for us, so that in a way um, put us on, in show business, as I said, or on the map. It got awards for design, City Club of New York um, honored it for the urban design. The Lighting Engineer Society of America gave it an award for the lighting. The American uh, Institute of Graphic Designers gave it an award for the graphics. It was published in magazines all over the world, in Japan and all over. Um, so I was thinking for a team of young architects, and we don't look it, but we we are still. <laughs> um, um, so for a, a, an office of young architects, uh, the meager fee that we got for it, which I don't remember exactly what it was, but the meager fee uh, was um, not secondary to the publicity that it got. The fee, as I recall, uh, enabled us to buy, uh, I think, a few subway tickets. And didn't we get a pastrami sandwich for that? I think so, yes, Bob, with mustard. <laughs> yeah. It, it, oh, wow. And a pickle. Uh, and uh, so, but I, you know, Joe, we used to kid around about this because we always said um, we should have all, uh, signed a contract that would have given us like five cents or something a ticket. But who knew? Maybe they would have sold five tickets. And we, you know, it was a little risky. So, well, that's, I wanted to, sorry, you know, go ahead. Uh, no, I was just saying that they've sold 
68 million tickets since then. And yeah, yeah. we calculated that it would have... Uh, oh, you calculated how much your commission would have been if you had oh, negotiated yeah, that? Our, we just had our accountant recently do a <laughs> very in-depth study of it. We, the whole firm had worked on this for maybe two weeks. They had to ignore Trump's uh, financial uh, audit because we, they were doing this. And they came out with, we would have had in our joint account $3.4 million now. So... Well, yeah. hopefully it led to that much of work, you know, of work that is worth that much. Well, yeah, but what could you buy for it now? A couple of, maybe two pastrami sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the interesting thing is the fact that, well, points out we were a very small firm at the time. And that's the reason we didn't hire someone to do the graphics, another person to do the lighting, another person to do the structure. We were able to do all of those things um without any other players participating which was both fun um and uh, ultimately thankfully uh, successful well we also that got us into doing graphic design too and a few years i guess in the 80s we were uh, asked by the museum of natural history to do a bunch of posters for them that were in the subway system oh wow uh, and we invented these characters and we did the super graphics and all the, they put them in the, all the billboards in the uh, 81st Street and Central Park subway station. So we did a lot of graphics over the years too. Yeah, and I know. You, it, you can see behind John, he's doing graphics now. I, I remarked on how much I liked his background and he said it was something he did. So. Yeah. So when, I mean, you talked about how it was an experiment and everything. Did you actually patronize the booth at the time? Have you ever been to the booth? And if you have, what are some of the great shows you've seen because of the booth? Well, the great thing that we did was that I introduced my mother to the guy who ran the booth. Jimmy Gatons, his name was. And my mother periodically would go down there after prearranged conversation with Jimmy about which show she wanted and so on. And she would knock on the back door. In other words, she wouldn't get on this long line, knock on the back door and someone would open, she, she'd ask for Jimmy. And she'd say, you know, hi, Mrs. Schiff, here are the two tickets to die, guys and dolls, whatever it was. So she was the one who benefited the most, frankly, from this whole project. No, I, I'm not a big Did she ever take you as her date? No, I was I was I was too busy. Um no, but she, she I'm sure she took a friend or maybe a dozen friends. I have no idea. <laughs> Bob, did you ever use the booth and buy anything? Yeah, you, I don't remember the shows. I'm not a, a major theater goer. Um Shh, you know, we won't we tell just, anyone. We live in New York, but we don't really take a tremendous advantage of it. Uh, by the way, it's getting brighter outside now. The eclipse is ending. <laughs> the eclipse yeah. of Canadian smoke is ending. Everything still looks like a sepia tone movie to me, yeah. where yeah. I am. Oh. Yeah. It's very strange. It's very strange. Everybody we dealt with um, in time in the, is gone now. I mean, it's amazing. It's really sad. Um, another story was, and I, I, I have a picture of it. I, don't, I didn't print it out. I can share my screen, I guess. Um, we took, I took a picture of it from the second or third floor of a nearby building when it was first built. And it was black and white and it showed long lines. It was showing how successful it really was. And we got a call from Mayor Lindsay's office and they wanted to have, uh, I think for, for the opening or some ceremony, they wanted this picture, they wanted to blow it up large and they have it in a reception for Mayor Lindsay. And it'd be, you know, he would take credit for the tickets booth. And um, so I sent them the picture and they blew it up and they noticed in the lower left-hand corner, there was a drunk guy lying on the steps with a bottle and a bunch of garbage around. He was lying like this. And they didn't notice it until they blew it up. They called me and they said, oh my God, we can't had this at the reception. This is before Photoshop, you know. They brushed him out, they airbrushed him out, they <laughs> sprayed him out. So that was his way of cleaning up Times Square because he was always <laughs> gonna clean up Times Square. <laughs> but he was very supportive of the project, I yes, think. he was, yeah. 
And when, when you started, you know, when you saw that it was a hit, did you ever, I mean, I don't know if we ever, even when things are successful, think about 50 years, but did you think it could be around 50 years later? I didn't think I would be around 50 years later. <laughs> yeah, it was highly, highly unlikely. I mean, we're talking about something that was built to last a year or two. And suddenly 30 years later, it's still uh, functioning. And we, at that point, went back to our account. And now how much should we have gotten? <laughs> per you know. No, but it's a, a, one of the things about our profession. It's there's a joy and it's a wonderful profession. It's a, there's a great deal of joy when you make something that has a value and is successful and a social value beyond an architectural value. And that's the pleasure you get. And after that, you're on to the next one. So, uh, but it was, it happened to be a unique project because we invented the whole thing. It's not just keep, you know, keep in mind, someone came to us and said, can you paint this trailer black and put some holes in the side, you know? And so we had to take it to this other level, which was uh, the rental aspect of it. And so it was a very interesting project and at the time and in retrospect. I think always when it, on all the projects that we worked that we were in practice, I guess for 40 years, John? About 19, uh, yeah, exactly. So we, in all those years, we always tried to find some, a strong concept before, as you're, before you're even uh, drawing things to have some strong idea that carries the project from beginning to end. And that you look back on and say that now, that now we understand why this was put together. It's not just a random thing. Uh, that you know, you did. You took some computer and put a few things in it, and it, wow, there's doesn't that look good? There always had to be some reason for it. It's something to do with the function, the site, the environment around the project that gave it some life. That that it's where it jumped off and off the page and had a meaning. And I think that one's that's the way we started, and I think that's the way we finished, right, John? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, even now, because it has been, you know, the booth was reimagined, but it still has that logo and everything. What did you think when they rebuilt it, I think, in 2008? I should know that off the top of my head, but I don't. John, what did you think? Well, we, 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 we were not, we didn't participate in that project. No, no, I know, I know. But, uh, yeah, I, I always think it's nice to see that logo. As a matter of fact, I think when we finished the project, just internally in our office, we had T-shirts made with the logo on it. Oh. Uh, yeah, so we were aware of the fact that it was something of value. And so to see, I mean, I think the new booth is is, is also a nice idea with that red stairwell going down. I, I, as a matter of fact, I was, went past there yesterday, and uh, the steps are filled with people looking up at Times Square. So not when we can't perceive that what we were thinking of looking at the booth so that it would get some publicity and get traffic. So now it's really look, it's for tourists to look up and, and pre appreciate the whole Times Square. So I think that is, that was very positive too. And I guess the only other thing I'd really like to know is because you talked about how the logo sort of just been exported and it's known all around the world. Have you ever seen it in like a strange context? Like what's the weirdest place you've spied the logo? Well, whenever we're, it's interesting whenever I'm traveling or when I look at a movie, I can date the movie by what the tickets booth looks like because it's <laughs> in a lot of films. It's been in a lot of films. Mm -hmm. I know there's one, they use it in London, they use it all over. So I've seen it in, you know, in Europe, um, but mainly in the movies. I think it's always fun to say, oh, I remember that was before it became red or, you know, we, so you can date the movies. <laughs> How about you, John? You'll have, you'll have a friend or someone who's, traveled overseas and comes back and say, hey, by the way, so the tickets logo and wherever, Mozambique or something, you know, they, so it, it's, uh, it certainly has a, uh, a life of its own for sure. Well, this is great. Is there anything else? I feel like both of you probably have a ton of stories that uh, you maybe haven't shared. If there, are any, if there are any stories to share, now is your time. About the tickets, please. Yes. Well, I mean, it's, it's, if you can relate it in some way, I will not say no. You're quite a storyteller. <laughs> you know, John remembers all my stories. I don't remember them. So when he says, tell the story about this, suddenly it comes back to me. 
these are like my main uh, publicists. Tell this story about two guys walked into a bar, boss. <laughs> no, I mean, well, just, you guys went you went to Cornell together, right? That's where that's you met. Correct. Architecture yes. school, yeah. 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 So you yeah. have a lot of memories oh, way beyond yeah. TKTS before and after. Not only that, our, our, our kids are dear friends of each other, oh. like our friends. They went to the same school for a few years, right, John? Yeah, and we, we also, with our wives, lived in oh. what was East Pakistan when we were there is now Bangladesh. So we were working there for a couple mm. of years, a little less than a few years, probably, right. let's see, 1964 and 65. Yeah. So yeah. before we did the booth, of course. We were hired by an American firm to run their office in, now it's Dhaka, East Pakistan. Now it's the capital of Bangladesh. <clears throat> and uh, we flew over there with our wives. We didn't have any kids then and uh, we walked into this office we didn't most of the people spoke some english but we didn't speak a word of bengali we lived there for a couple of years and it was a wonderful experience and a lot of great stories from that period but they're they're totally unrelated to yes, the unre group. but i, I feel like i want i feel like i need to take you out for a drink and hear them at some point but probably not for this you know, is there anything else you want to share? I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah. I, yeah. You Maybe wanna... I'm going to point out that my wife just mentioned to me that we are members of TDF. Yes. No, we, so no, what's the last we... great show you saw with TDF? Oh, it was a good one. Uh, Le oh, Leopoldstadt. Leopoldstadt. Yeah, yeah, it was a good one. I'm, that I'm, wasn't I'm... so long ago. That was within the last three weeks or so. No, the interesting thing is, it's a, it's amazing to think this is 50 years ago. I was speaking with Bob's daughter the other day, <clears throat> mentioning this, and she now, Dara's 53, I think, Bob. That's right. Yeah. And so she was just born when we did this thing, and here here it is, 50, suddenly, boom, 50 years later. Incredible. I, rem you know, I was born in 71, so I don't remember 73 really, but I remember Times Square in the late 70s. My, my father was, a, I mean, he was a museum goer, a theater goer and a film goer. And for some reason, I think there were cheap tickets in Times Square or something. We were always seeing movies in Times Square and he'd just be like, ah, don't look at all the X-rated stuff that we passed. <laughs> but, you know, I remember how different that area was. I mean, I remember when it changed in 1990. You know, I mean, it literally just one day they shut them all down. They changed the rules and it well, changed. Well, and when we worked on some other projects in Times Square, it was the city planning office of Midtown Development. And uh, they they had a fellow like Ken Halpern at that time in the in the early 80s. He proposed closing uh, Broadway which they thought was ridiculous then. What about what the traffic, what's going to happen? And they oh. can't. Now they've done it. Yeah. So, you know, well, they were doing under Mayor Lindsay and I guess then Koch, they were doing a lot of interesting forward looking things, which eventually got done. Yeah. In yeah. fact, we at that part of that project was we redesigned the tickets booth as a permanent booth. <clears throat> lot, much larger because it could extend into what was Broadway and um, we included not only the tickets booth, but the Army Recruiting Center and a police office. And Bob uh, looked at it one day and he looks at it and he says, geez, suppose somebody gets on the wrong line. They're intending to buy a ticket and they're going <laughs> to end up joining the Army and being in Vietnam or something. So that, but that, and that was a nice structure, but of course it never happened. Well, thank you. This has been wonderful. I, I'm so glad I got to meet you, even if it was online.